Welcome in to episode one of the Rookie Big Board Podcast. My name is Matt Hicks at the FF underscore educator on Twitter. I'm the director of fantasy football for the NFL Draft Bible and the host for the Rookie Big Board Podcast. I am so excited to finally get the first episode of the Rookie Big Board Podcast up. And today we're going to be talking about the best of the rest when it comes to the 2021 NFL Draft Class running backs. So we're going to be talking about the best players in this running back class, my favorite ranking, my top five favorite guys right now that are not named Najee Harris or Travis Etienne. That's what's going to be on today's podcast episode. But before we dig into that, I want to talk a little bit about what this podcast is, the inspiration, how it's going to work, and how you all can help support this podcast and grow it and make it something really special. First off, what's this podcast all about? This is really born out of the idea that I really want to focus on rookies moving forward. It's the area of fantasy football that I found I have a lot of success in. It's the area of fantasy football I found my skill set really overlaps with my passions, and I think that's a really fantastic place to be as a content creator. Love college football. I love the NFL draft. I love scouting prospect as it goes. But I've also found that rookies are one of the spots in fantasy football where we make the biggest mistakes. We misvalue players the most. So what I want to help do with this podcast is help you understand the value of this rookie class, strategy, players, all the way through the year. This is not an NFL draft season podcast. This is a year-round podcast I'm really excited to bring it to you. So what I'm going to be doing is using my experience scouting prospects and specifically translating that to fantasy football production. I'm going to evaluate and track rookies all year round. That's before the draft. That's through the summer. That's through training camp. That's into the season. Each episode, we're going to build a big board. We're going to build a big board together. So there will always be a ranking and a big board building. You're going to see how that works here in this first episode. And uh, listen, it's not going to be your boring here. My top five running backs here, my top five wide receivers. All right, next week we're going to do tight ends. That's not what this is about. We're going to look at niche rankings, niche parts of the game and talk about how you can take advantage and look at the game and look at the prospects in different ways to get the most out of them. So I'm really excited to do that. So it doesn't matter if you're watching endless hours of tape like me, If you're just a dedicated dynasty player, if you're a casual dynasty player looking to learn more about the rookie class, you're a college football fanatic, it doesn't matter. You're a seasonal player looking to get an advantage in your league. All of these, all of these different types of players will benefit from this podcast. And by the way, I'm going to try to make these episodes as short, sweet, and to the point so you can get the most out of your time. I really appreciate you spending some time listening to me here. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into today's episode. Now, this is a brand new podcast, so I'm going to really need your help in growing it. So I'm going to ask you to please take two seconds and subscribe to this podcast, whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, watching on YouTube, or anywhere else podcasts can be found. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe and leave a five-star review. Please, please take a moment and do that. I know everybody says that, but this is a brand new podcast. So listen through. If you enjoy the podcast episode, give it a five-star rating at the end. It takes two seconds, and I would really appreciate that. Now, each episode, we're actually going to start with a question from a patron, because this podcast is powered by my Patreon, patreon.com backslash the FF Educator. And we have a Slack channel, and there's always really good questions in the Slack channel. You can actually get in on the Slack channel. It's just a dollar a month, and that gets you access to the Slack channel and the bonus episodes of this podcast. And I'm going to talk about the bonus episodes in here in a second. Uh, And for $3 a month, you gain access to the Rookie Big Board itself, which is what you're going to hear me consistently alluding to throughout this podcast. I have an actual rookie big board that I move players around on with all the tape evaluations, and you could get that as well by joining the Patreon. But the really the point of all of this is to say this podcast is powered by patrons, so I'm always going to start it with one question from the Slack channel. And Ben brought up a really good question this week. Ben French asked, which rookie running backs can be good pass catchers despite not being asked to pass catch at the college level. And this is something that I really harp on from a fantasy football perspective. 
PPR leagues are huge. Whether you're playing half or full point PPR, that's what most of us are playing now. And so you always have to have a high valuation on pass catching ability when it comes to rookies in fantasy football. Now, one of the biggest traps we fall in is relying too much on box scores when it comes to whether or not a prospect can catch. College schemes vary widely. If you're not familiar with the college game, there are a much wider array of schemes than in the NFL. Sometimes college backs aren't asked to catch the ball simply because the scheme doesn't demand it. It does not mean they can't catch the ball. Let me give you a really good example. Last season, A.J. Dillon. Coming out of Boston College, one of his biggest knocks was that he couldn't catch the ball. A.J. Dillon can catch the ball. He has good hands. The difference being that Boston College didn't ask him to catch the ball. It simply was not in their game plan. And so he got knocked in a lot of evaluations for that, which wasn't really fair. A very similar thing to Travis Etienne before he came back for the 2020 season. What was everyone saying about Etienne? Oh, he can't catch the ball. He can't catch the ball. Travis Etienne, he's had some hand issues in the past, but nothing so significant for what he was being knocked for. And then we saw this year he came back, I think he put up 50 uh, receptions. He could always have caught the ball. Clemson made a more concerned effort to get him the ball. So Ben is suggesting which players in this class kind of fit into that narrative and who should we look past? Well, I just gave you one, Travis Etienne, and I'm going to actually dig into another one of these guys out of Louisville, Javion Hawkins, a little bit more. Uh, when we actually get to the big board, so there's a little spoiler, Hawkins will be on my big board here for this podcast, but two guys who won't be on this podcast, but I do want to mention that they have better hands and they're being given credit for, and I'm not saying these are the best pass catchers in the, in the class by any means, but keep an eye on Larry Roundtree the third from Missouri. Larry Roundtree is a senior bowl prospect, and for good reasons. He's got some of the most underrated tape of any running back in this class. Highly productive guy the last few years out of, out of Missouri. Missouri, run first team, not asked to catch the ball a lot, but I like Roundtree's hands when he was asked to. Another guy that's really going to be buried in this draft class, and I'll preface this by saying Rakeem Boyd out of Arkansas, probably a day three pick in this year's NFL draft. But we've seen the ability for day three picks, especially at the running back position, to be an impact type guy. By the way, if you're not familiar with the NFL draft process, day three pick it's the third day of the NFL draft. That's rounds four, uh, five, six, and seven. Um, so you could still get a lot of value in that. And, and Rakeem Boyd is somebody that I think flashes really nice hands at times. Now he's more of a power back and he plays at Arkansas. So pass catching isn't what we naturally think of. But I like Rakeem Boyd and he's flying under the radar. Both Roundtree and Boyd are guys who are flying way under the radar. Hawkins I'm going to dig into a little bit more later. Uh, so those are three names, and of course, I started off with Travis Etienne, which is kind of the classic example, but I think folks have finally clicked with Etienne that he can catch the ball. He just wasn't asked to catch the ball. Really good question there, Ben. I appreciate you asking that, and like I said, you can get in on the Slack and the bonus episodes and the Rookie Big Board itself all for $3 a month at patreon.com backslash DFF Educator. All right, now it's time to build the big board. This is what it's all about. So on today's episode, the specific big board that we are building is the best of the rest. Tier two running backs in the 2021 NFL draft class. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. This running back class is deep. It's got some really good depth. I could probably rank 20 guys right now just off the top of my head that I think will contribute in the NFL at the next level. So if you have a player that you really like, and you're like, why is he not in this big board ranking? I promise you, they probably still have a shot at being a running back, you know, three through five, three through seven in this draft class. And I'm actually going to be talking about today, in total, my running backs three through seven, right? Because it's not Najee Harris or Travis Etienne. That's not who we're talking about. We're talking about those next guys up. I'm going to give you five on this podcast. But every podcast episode for the rookie big board, I'm also recording a bonus podcast for the patrons, and that will be available, like I said, patreon.com backslash the FF educator. And on that episode, I'm going to dig in a little bit more. I'm going to give you eight through 13. So legitimately, there are a lot of guys who can put a claim on being the potential running back three in this class. I'm just giving you the five guys right now that I think have the best shot at claiming that. And obviously, value changes over the course of time, but looking at it here in January, 
There's a lot of candidates for it, and there's a lot of guys I'm fired up about it. Now, the running back position is really critical this year, and it's what I've just been alluding to. You could ask 10 different draft analysts, who is the running back three in this class? You'll probably get six or seven different answers. So I'm not by any means telling you that the five guys I'm going to list out here in this podcast are locked and loaded. You know, the next five guys down the list, I don't take that approach. I have a realistic approach to this process, but I do want them to be on your radar. And I do believe that every guy that I list off here is going to be an impact player in one way or another. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. Let's build this big board. And we're going to start off here at number five with the running back out of Memphis, Kenneth Gainwell. Now, Kenny Gainwell has a really interesting narrative. He's a, he's a draft Twitter favorite. There are some that are probably very excited that he made it onto the big board. And there are some that probably feel like he should be at the top of this big board. Well, let's take a deep dive. And by the way, uh, I'm always going to come from the perspective that you may not know a lot on every player that I list, but if you do know who I who you know if you are familiar with the players that I'm listing, I also think that my breakdown of the players will give you a good insight and analysis on their tape, but also some extra caveats, some extra nuggets about them. So, the goal of this podcast is to apply to folks uh, with, a, with a really broad range of experience in college football in Devi in Dynasty Fantasy Football. So starting here with Kenny Gainwell, if you remember, he took the college world by storm in 2019. He rushed for 1,459 yards and 13 touchdowns for the Memphis Tigers. That season, we just talked about how important pass catching is. He also caught 51 passes for 610 yards. Now, this was really the one year of production for Kenny Gainwell. So that scares a lot of folks off. Are you okay with one year of production from Gainwell, which was in 2019? Gainwell chose to opt out of the 2020 season due to COVID. Now, I want to put a preface on this, and I haven't judged any players for opting out. It's a very difficult decision, but I will add a caveat on this. Gainwell specifically mentioned that he opted out because of uh, family matters related to COVID and how COVID has affected his family. So do with that information what you will, um, but it seems like he had a very uh, legitimate reason for opting out in 2020, not that anybody who opted out did not have a legit reason. One thing I want to point out here, Antonio Gibson, the running back for the Washington football team that took fantasy football by storm, that mid-round rookie steal, Antonio Gibson, he's also from Memphis, and if you remember, he played on that same team with Gainwell in 2019. Guess why Antonio Gibson never played running back? And not never. He, he had snaps at running back. He had carries. But Antonio Gibson was lined up as a wide receiver most of the time. Only 33 carries in 2019 for Antonio Gibson because Kenny Gainwell was dominating the backfield. Gainwell got 231 carries compared to Antonio Gibson's 33 carries. Gainwell also had more receptions at 51 than Gibson's 38. So if you like Gibson, you're probably going to at least have your interest peaked by Kenneth Gainwell. Now, let's break down Gainwell's tape a little bit because I'm not saying he's the exact same player as Gibson. He's absolutely not. But Gainwell does display a high level of athleticism. It's centered around his fluid hips. He's got a really nice jump cut and a signature juke move. He's very dangerous in space. Now, he's a patient runner. He waits for the hole to open and expl explodes hard into gaps. He's a quick player. I don't expect him to dominate the 40. Now, when it comes to Indianapolis, when it comes to the NFL combine and running the 40-yard dash, that measures straight line speed, and it bumps a lot of press prospects up. However, I don't think that's necessarily where Gainwell is going to score best. He's a quick lateral mover. He's quicker than he is fast. That's a term you'll hear me use a lot. But on top of that, I mentioned it earlier, he's a great pass catcher. That should perk up the ears of fantasy football players. So that's the upside of Kenny Gainwell. The, the negatives, and I'll always give both sides, the reason he's coming in at five on my big board and not three, I'm a little concerned with his strength and contact balance. He gets knocked off, of course, easily, and he doesn't overpower American Athletic Conference defenders. Now, I am not somebody who's going to sit here and knock the group of five uh, teams, but you have to be realistic and say, if you can't overpower guys playing in the AAC, 
there's going to be a, a transition curve moving on to the NFL. He produces in space very well, but he's going to have to get more comfortable producing in tight space to be an impact player in the NFL. And like I said, if you're a numbers person, he has a small sample size. All that being said, there is a whole lot to like here with Kenny Gainwell, and he's going to be number five on the rookie big board, best of the rest running backs in the 2021 NFL draft class. Now, let's keep building this big board. And here's somebody coming up here at number four you may not be as familiar with. I think most folks at least would have heard of Kenny Gainwell, but you may not be too familiar with Khalil Herbert. I'll be honest with you. Khalil Herbert wasn't at the top of my radar, and I study Debbie prospects. I have the Devi big board, which also, by the way, comes along with the, with the access to the Patreon. And I have 400 players on there from last season. Khalil Herbert is not at the top of that big board. He almost came out of nowhere because he just transferred this season to Virginia Tech. He played his first four years of collegiate ball at the University of Kansas with the Jayhawks, absolutely trapped in that offense. Now, if you go back and you watch Kansas tape, there's definitely some highlights and some flashes, and you could tell why the Virginia Tech coaching staff wanted to add Herbert for this year. In four years at Kansas, he had 1,735 rushing yards. Now, if you're not familiar with college football, Kansas is not exactly an innovative offense or a really dynamic one. All right, There's not a lot of guys that you hear about coming out of Kansas, and it's for a good reason. It's a really tough place to be a productive offensive player. But Gainwell's coming out. He's 5'9", 205. He fills out and uses that frame really well. I know that's not the biggest frame, but he uses that frame really well. This season at Virginia Tech, he ran for 1,183 yards and eight touchdowns for the Hokies. That's super impressive in a shortened season. Powerful runner. Low center of gravity. Not easily knocked off his path. Now, he's not the fastest back in the class, but he's a good downhill runner. And you can look and see on his tape that he shows up in some of the biggest games of the season. He squares up and beats Clemson defenders straight on and beats them to the edge. And he proved against North Carolina that he has breakaway speed compared to their secondary. Broke off some big plays. Showed that acceleration downfield. Now here's my favorite part of Herbert. It's his vision. You cannot overvalue vision when it comes to breaking down the running back position. Because if you don't have vision, it's really hard. It, I don't care if you're the most athletic running back in the world. If you don't have vision, it's going to be very difficult for you to succeed in the NFL. He reads gaps well. He's a patient runner. But once he sees a hole, he has a shark in the water mentality. He's going to attack that hole without hesitation. I really like Khalil Herbert, and he's still flying under the radar at this point in time. Now, I don't love most player comps. You're not often going to hear me make player comps, but I heard a good player comp, and this actually came from my buddy uh, Damon Parson, and he said that Herbert's running style reminds him a lot of Mark Ingram, and I like that comp. I do. I like that comp for him. Khalil Herbert, under the radar, but he's going to be number four on my rookie big board, and I'm really excited about him at number four. I think he's somebody – I don't know if he'll move – you know, continue to move up too high in the draft process for me. But I think I'm higher on him than most at this point. And I think folks are going to start getting closer to me on that. Now, number three, I have to say, this is one that I don't think is a consensus opinion. And I always point this out. I will give you my opinion on this podcast when it comes to my big boards, when it comes to my tape evaluations on Twitter, I always give my opinion. And I'm not always right. But I am always true and honest and transparent with what my eyes see. And C.J. Verdell, the running back out of Oregon, doesn't seem to be a super popular guy. He's 5'9", 210. I love his size, and I love his traits. Now, he's playing out of the Pac-12. It's hard to find tape on guys coming out of the Pac-12. It's one of the things that I talk about a whole lot. One of the most valuable ways that you could play fantasy football is to lock in on Pac-12 guys, and if they hit, you're usually going to return a really strong value on him for a couple reasons. Your, your casual fantasy football player probably isn't watching much college football, and if they are, they're probably not staying up late like me, uh, well past uh, midnight on Saturdays, 
to catch the late games for, for the Pac-12, which is when a lot of the times teams like Oregon play. It's also harder uh, for guys, even the guys that are grinding it, to get access to all 22 tape from the Pac-12, or even guys just cutting up broadcast film because, again, uh, the Pac-12 is showcased on national television less than some other conferences like the ACC, the Big Ten, the SEC. So a lot of the times we could slide under the radar because we overvalue primetime Pac-12 games. This is one of the many reasons that a lot of folks, not me, a lot of folks missed on Justin Herbert last year. So let's go back to exactly C.J. Verdell, taking the Pac-12 strategy piece out of it. And I always try to balance the player and the strategy and show both sides and what goes into my thinking. Back to the 5'9", 210-pound running back out of Oregon. He has back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons as a true freshman and true sophomore for the Ducks. That was 2018 to 2019. In those two seasons, he had 18 touchdowns. Now, 2020 was an odd year for him, and I mentioned a lot of folks have kind of pivoted off of C.J. Verdell, and I think this is why his backfield mate, Die looked really good. He's got some worry that maybe Die took over too much of the role uh, towards the end of the season. Verdell was struggling with an injury. 2020 is a weird year. They played a shortened season anyways. It's really hard, especially with the Pac-12. They played six or seven games, depending on the team. It's a little difficult, but when I break down his 2019 and 2020 tape, I like what I see. I see the traits that I want to see in an impact player, and sometimes it comes down to traits, and it's going to end up being landing spot and whether those traits are developed, which determines whether or not he can live up to this spot. But I really like him as number three on my big board for the best of the rest running backs in this class. And I'll tell you why. He's a fearless runner. Charges at linebackers with power and conviction. He's got a really low center of gravity that helps him power through linebackers. And I'm not just talking about Pac-12 linebackers. Watch the 2019 Auburn tape. He takes on Auburn linebackers and powers through them. And I, one of the things that I like to say a lot is that you don't get closer to the NFL on Saturdays than SEC linebackers. These are big boys. These are good players. These are talented guys. And he takes them on. You, There is a play on his 2020 Stanford tape where C.J. Verdell takes on a Stanford defensive back head on at the goal line. He literally flips this defender. I am not exaggerating. That is not a hyperbole. He flips the defender over on his back and scores a touchdown. C.J. Verdell is scoring touchdowns in the NFL. If nothing else, he is going to be a goal line vulture. At worst, he's a goal line vulture, and we end up hating him for fantasy football, right? Because he's stealing touchdowns for somebody else. But at best, he is the guy that we're starting, and he's scoring touchdowns for us. He's explosive. He accelerates upfield well. He's not the fastest guy off the line of scrimmage, But once he hits that second level of the field, he has really good acceleration downfield. He burns the Utah secondary on his 2019 tape. Now, remember, the Utah secondary in 2019 was a very talented group. I believe they sent three guys to the NFL last year, just the secondary itself. He burns them downfield. Now, I will point out, C.J. Verdell has not technically declared for the draft. I would be very surprised if he doesn't declare for the draft, which is why I still put him in my big board here. But he's definitely not a consensus pick. This is going to be higher than you you see most folks rank C.J. Verdell. But like I said, I'm always transparent about my rankings and what I'm seeing. Let's keep building this big board here. Number two, Javante Williams out of North Carolina. Now, if you thought me putting C.J. Verdell at three was controversial, Javante Williams at two is controversial. Because Williams is a really popular guy. Some folks are putting him in that same tier as Harris or Etienne. Some folks are putting Williams above Harris and Etienne. And and I'll be honest with that. I see some folks do that. But that's not what I'm seeing on his tape right now. And I'm not saying that Williams won't be a good player in the NFL. I think he will. I think he'll be a good fantasy football player. But I just don't see him at that same level. Not yet. Maybe I will, especially if his landing spot locks in 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 a really good way. But I'm not there yet. Williams is 5'10", 222. He ran for 933 yards and five touchdowns in 2019. As a sophomore and as a junior in 2020, he ran for 1,140 yards in 19, yes, 19 touchdowns. 
Now, if you're noticing a trend on today's running backs, it's strength, and Williams is strong. He absorbs contact very well, stays on his feet when tackled low, not afraid to put his head down and take on any hole, and he also has one of my favorite traits for a running back. He refuses to give up on a play, always falls forward. Now, he can burst off the line of scrimmage, and at times he gets to the second level quickly. Sometimes, though, he's too patient. He gets caught behind the line of scrimmage. And here's my biggest fear. Too often, I see him running into the back of his offensive lineman. And I know that happens at times naturally, and sometimes that's just part of the game. Other times, it's concerning. It's a red flag. And whenever I point out a red flag, that doesn't mean it's it's a it's a damning you know kind uh, of trait. It doesn't mean it's going to stop him from being good, but it does you know perk up my eyes and say you know that's not something that you like to see, and it's not something NFL teams like to see. I have four games broken down on Williams, so I have a pretty good sample size here: Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, Wake Forest, Miami, all in 2020 games. He was all productive, but production doesn't always equal NFL success. And running into linemen is one of those major flags when it comes to vision. And I just talked earlier, right, when I talked about how much I like Khalil Herbert's vision. If you have questions about vision, that's going to stop you from being put at the top of my rankings. Now, he's a good pass catcher. He's a really reliable blocker in pass pro. And I know pass protection isn't isn't the most exciting thing for a lot of folks when it comes to breaking down prospects. But if you're good at pass protection, you stay on the field. And if you're on the field, you're going to produce, right? And so for fantasy football purposes, we love players, running backs specifically, that are good in pass protection. Now, he's a good prospect. He just doesn't excite me as much as Harris, Etienne, or the number one player on my big board. Now, I'm really excited to talk about the number one player on my big board because I think I'm higher on him at this point than anybody else. I think I've heard of one or two other people that have this running back as their running back three, so I'm really excited to talk about him, and that is Javian Hawkins out of Louisville. Now, Hawkins is 5'10", 195, and he's been hidden in a quirky Louisville offense. Now, I want to take a moment here and emphasize that Javian Hawkins is 195. If you're watching on YouTube, you see the picture I have up here of Hawkins. This man is yoked up, all right? He is strong. He has muscle on his body. There is this narrative out there that because Hawkins came into college weighing in at a buck 55, which he did, that he is small or that he does not possess muscle or strength. You can see this man is strong. He's yoked up, all right? But he's seriously athletic too. He's an agile, twitchy runner. He's slippery even in tight space. He's got great lateral movement, and my man can hit the B button, as I call it. He can break off a really good spin. That one's for my Madden players here. He's fast into the second level of the field, beats linebackers to the edge. He flips his hips quickly and turns upfield on a dime. Now, he has sharp change of direction ability, sees the entire field well. He's not as strong as Herbert or Williams, but he does hold his own. He's got a low center of gravity. He breaks out of wraps and has really good contact balance. There's a difference between strength and contact balance. And although Hawkins may be lacking a little bit in that pure strength, he has fantastic contact balance. You need to make sure that you tackle him head on and wrap him up. Otherwise, he will not go down. We mentioned it earlier. He wasn't asked to catch the ball a lot in the Louisville offense. They were a run-first team, even with their quarterback, with Cunningham. And when they did throw the ball, they had two good prospects, which I'm sure we'll get to uh, later on here in draft season, in in Fitzpatrick and Tutu Atwell. So Hawkins was not a priority for the passing game. But still, over the last two years, in 21 games, he rushed for 2,355 yards and 16 touchdowns. He is exactly the prospect that I want for fantasy football. Now, do I expect him to necessarily go off the board as the third running back off the board in the 2020 NFL draft class? No, but the order that you get drafted does not always necessarily indicate your fantasy football value. 
And so for Hawkins, he's going to be a day two guy. He's going to go on day two of the NFL draft, but I still get really excited about it. So let's run back the big board. Now that we've built the entire big board, let's run it back here. And it starts with Kenny Gainwell out of Memphis. Very athletic, very high upside player. I've heard some folks have Gainwell as high as running back one in this draft class. I'm not quite there right now. He's my running back seven, but I think he has a legitimate argument for running back three. Next up on the big board, running it back here is Khalil Herbert. He's number four on my best of the rest big board. I don't know if Khalil Herbert will rise much more than running back six on my big board, but I think he's going to be around in the second to third round of your rookie drafts, and I think he's going to return really solid, consistent value. Number three, C.J. Verdell out of Oregon. Here's the wild card pick. I'm higher on him than most folks, but I think he can really return that value. Number two, Javante Williams out of the University of North Carolina. Putting him at four in my running back rankings is lower than most, but I that's where I feel really comfortable with Javante Williams. And I'm going big here with Javion Hawkins as my running back three. And of course, value is always susceptible to move around, to be moved. But at this point in time, and it is a fluid process, but at this point in time, Hawkins is my running back three. And I feel confident with his traits and how those are going to translate over to the NFL. That's the big board. That's today's podcast episode. I really appreciate you joining me in for episode one. Episode one, if you're listening in here, you're starting from the beginning of the journey. And I really, really appreciate that. I hope this podcast episode was enjoyable for you. I'm really excited about breaking down and building more big boards here in the future. Please, 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 if you enjoyed this podcast, do me two things. Subscribe, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can watch on YouTube. I have the graphics going up here on YouTube as well. Please subscribe and please, 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 please leave a five-star rating. That does so much. It's not an ego boost. It helps others learn about the podcast. It's not an ego boost. I don't need five stars so that I feel better about myself. I just want more people to get this insight. We're going to grow this thing one listener at a time, and it starts with those five-star reviews. You also can join the community on Patreon, patreon.com backslash the FF Educator, and that's going to get you access to the bonus episode. So right after this, I'm actually going to sit down. I'm going to record the next five running backs, and there are definitely some guys that I'm sure you may be really uh, confused or shocked aren't on this list. Guys like Chuba Hubbard. I'm going to talk about Chuba on the bonus podcast episode. Uh, you also can join the Slack channel where we're talking rookies, Devi, Dynasty, Football Daily. And of course, you get access to the 2021 Rookie Big Board, currently 169 prospects. And you can actually go in and see the full evaluations, full tape breakdowns for all of the running backs that I talked about here on this episode, as well as my NFL draft and rookie fantasy football draft projections for all of these players. I'm going to continue building this dynamic big board over the course of the entire year. 